Is it true that you've been offered an 8% pay deal for your members and you've rejected it? Yeah, we have rejected an offer of 4% for this year, nothing for last year, and another 4% for next year. But that is conditional, uh, Julia. That's conditional upon us accepting thousands of job cuts and the safety regimes in Network Rail's maintenance being slashed in half. Uh, so that's an unacceptable offer to us at this time. We're seeking an improvement on that and we want to work with them to try and get an improved offer. Uh, but at the moment, we just don't have one. So the strikes remain on. OK. Um, and obviously, at least people were around the table. Again, as, as Lord Osseth was just saying, an awful lot of people would be find that a very welcome pay rise. And of course, as you point out, if it's over a period of three years, that is undoubtedly a real terms pay cuts and there's no doubt at all but if it's um mm. you, if you said this year you know nothing for last year well we didn't see this level of inflation last year this is a new development we're seeing and we're told it's going to be a sort of mm. we hope a fairly temporary development even if it's just for a couple of years um with millions of other people not getting anything like that do you think you've still got public support well Julia, look, people in this country have seen their living standards falling now for decades and we're now in the sharpest decline of living standards since records began. We've got the, the worst drop in living standards out of all of the G7 countries. Uh, it can't be the case that people continue in this country to take below inflation pay rises when the cost of living is going through the roof because that just means people are going to carry on getting poorer and finding their working lives more insecure. That's got to change. We were hearing... Uh, not too long ago about the high wage economy. What happened to that? Well, I mean, if you lock people in their homes for a, a best part of a couple of years and they're not producing anything and you've got railways with basically no one on them, um, that, that I think, I think that, that's what happened to that. Um, Liz Truss, one of the Tory leadership hopefuls, she may well be looking at the polls, the next Prime Minister on the 6th of September, she uh, is seeking to introduce uh, curbs on what she calls militant action by trade unions. I think, and I don't mean to be rude, Eddie, I think she might be talking about you and your mate Mick Lynch. Uh, she wants to introduce those within 30 days of becoming Prime Minister. Uh, basically ensuring a minimum service is provided on vital national infrastructure such as railways uh, also having a minimum threshold uh, as well we're well, raising the minimum threshold for the number of, of people in that in union voting uh, for strikes now there's no doubt at all you've got a huge support from your members for your strike but should there be a requirement that people who work in essential public services that they they have to provide a basic level of service so that you can't hold the whole country to ransom while you battle with your bosses well i don't accept that we're holding the country to ransom for a start off and it seems to me that people like liz trust their approach to the cost of living crisis is to criminalize dissent against poverty that is what she's really talking about the reason the reason living standards have been falling for 30 years across Western economies is because successive governments have set out to reduce the ability of working people to bargain for better wages and that's her approach to the cost of living crisis. Keep wages down, criminalise the ability of workers to be able to achieve better pay rates and let profits and let prices rip. She's got it the wrong way around. What we need is redistributive policies in this country that are going to take those bumper profits and redirect them into the pockets of working class people where they're needed. And also we need to cap prices, not wages. Well, you say cap prices, not wages. Look, you know, we have a free market economy. I mean, you're talking about sort of going back to the 1970s. We don't have a free market economy in Labour. Don't so, we? Uh, everyone likes a free market until it comes to free market in Labour. Why don't you take the restrictions off us and let us bargain freely? We're the only part of the economy that nobody wants to be able to bark it, bargain freely. That's not right, is it? Well, I mean, you have a, you, I mean, you're on strike. How strong are those restrictions? It's not unreasonable to request, you know, to require, and you, you, you've more than fulfilled those requirements, a minimum no, no, threshold no, no. Look, of percentage of people voting and voting for the strike we've action. Got, That's not unreasonable. We've already beat the thresholds in this dispute. I know. We have got the most restrictive anti-trade union legislation in Western Europe. We're on a par, according to the International Trade Union Congress for, tr for Trade Union Freedom Rights, with Russia. That's what we're on a par with. And, she's and, and yet you're able to go on strike. Introducing new laws. But, but, but you are able to are go on strike. The postal right workers way? are on strike. We've got, we'll have strike ballots, no doubt, by, uh, by health workers and by teachers. Somehow yeah. these terribly restrictive policies they... mean that you can't go on strike except you yeah. can. Oh, come on. 
Look, if you don't want strikes in the economy during a cost of living crisis, what you need to do is address the problem, and that is falling living standards and falling wages. They need to come up. That's how you stop uh, a wave of strike action in the country. We're not striking because of our ability to, just because we've got laws that allow us to. We're striking because our members are suffering in this cost of living crisis and they're being threatened with redundancies. Now, that's not acceptable. So if people want to see a bit of industrial peace, what they're going to have to do is address the problem, not criminalise dissent against poverty. OK, but let's... OK, it's not dissent against poverty. Your members are not living in poverty. Let's stop that nonsense. Equally, they're not earning... Some of my members they're not earning 100 grand either, but they're not living... Uh, this no, use of the word poverty members, is... a lot of my members are on 24 grand That's not uh, poverty. In this dispute, it's not good income, but it's not that? poverty. Well, you try living on 24 grand in London and see how you get on. I, I, and you, you come back and tell me I've, whether I've you think I've lived on a lot less than that in my time, I can assure you, even allowing for inflation. Uh, no, it's not easy. No one's pretending it yeah. is. No one's I'm pretending sure, I'm it sure. is. I'm sure. I'm sure. Okay, let's let's talk about where we go from here, though, because there's talk about these strikes going on and on and on for months, even into next yeah. year. How is this going to get resolved? Mm. Well, at the moment, we've got absolutely no offers from the train oper operating companies. Uh, we're making, we've had made, we've, we have made some progress with Network Rail, so we want to continue in discussions and try and get an improved uh, deal for our people there. But in the train operating companies, there is no offer. Uh, and no offer means more strike action, because we're not going to just lie down and say, that's fine, we'll just have a third year of a pay freeze, you can take our members' jobs You've away from them. You've not been offered a pay freeze. You've been offered 4% this year and 4% next year. That's in Network Rail. Julie, we're in dispute with 14, know, um, 15 companies. So none, none of those train operating company companies, of of those. none of the train operating companies are offering you any more. So members who work for them aren't getting any. They're more. not offering us anything. They haven't offered us four percent. They haven't offered us one percent. They're offering us zero. What is, he, what is happening? They haven't made wait, wait, any offer. Wait, wait, let me clarify. You, you go in. You're one of the negotiators. You go with Mick Lynch and others. Um, you, you, you're at the negotiating table. Are you all just sitting there eating penguin biscuits and not actually having a conversation about pay? What are you actually discussing if you go in for these hours and hours of meetings and no one actually says, here's what we'll offer you? What, are you all just sitting there mute? Are you all playing computer games? What are you doing? No, of course we're asking them for offers on pay. So what That's are they the saying? And they're saying no. And they're going, no, Eddie Mick, they're not a penny. No offer. I, do you know, I've got to be honest no with you, I don't pay. believe you. Well, that's up to you, but you can... Uh, why don't you ask the train operating companies, then, what they're offering? Because they're not offering us anything on pay. Why don't you ask them what they're offering You're, you're on saying pay? you're we sitting there for days, for days on end, and there is no offer on pay at all from any of those train operating companies? Well, we, we, we can't help that, can we? If we're saying to the other side of the table, we need you to make an offer on pay, and they don't do that, we can't, you know, we can't force them. We've got to come out here and take strike action, haven't we? Can I just say, by the That's way, why apologies. We're here on these picket lines. Uh, outside, as you can hear, so the problem with outside broadcasting, of course, is you do get the background noise on Euston Road. Sorry about That's that, right. everybody, but thank you for persevering. If we were getting offers on pay, we'd be considering them, but we don't have any offers on pay from the train operating companies. We don't have any offers at okay. all. Someone needs their heads banged together. Can I come in and sort this out? I wish you would. I mean, I'll tell you what the problem we've got is we've got a load of companies with a mandate from the DFT uh, to strip jobs out, cut back on wages, and we're not seeing any offers coming forward that address the cost of living crisis. OK, well... Now, we... And I think that's because the government's policy is to keep wages down rather than tackling the obscene profits and shocking prices we're seeing in the economy. OK, Could just final word from you, Eddie Dempsey. What is your message to the many millions of people who might have wanted, well, needed to go on the railways to get to and from work, uh, to and from, uh, uh, you know, mm. visiting family, running their businesses? What's your message to them yeah. today? My message to them is don't let the media try and play us off each other. You know full well if you can't get to work today, the only reason people are bothered about it is because we're on strike. No one cares about you when you do get to work, except people like us. I'm interested in what happens to people when they are at work. Are they getting a pay rise? Are they being looked after? The only time people in the media seem to be worried about workers is when they can't get to work when we're on strike. Well, what about when they get there, Julia? You, you, you need to be listening to my show more often, Eddie. You might learn a lot. <laughs>